Gene McFadden and John Whitehead, who would go on to create the successful R&B duo McFadden and Whitehead, met as teenagers while attending Edison High School in North Philadelphia in 1964. The first group that the boys would form together was called the Epsilons. The original quartet included school friends Alan Beatty and Ronald Lowry, who would later go on to join soul band Maze. When singer Otis Redding came to Philly for a show in 1966, the group managed to bluff their way backstage and performed for him. Pleased with what he heard, Otis immediately offered them the opportunity to join his touring roadshow. The Epsilons enjoyed touring with the soul icon throughout the late 60s, until Otis's untimely death in a plane crash in 1967. Through their work with Otis, another great opportunity presented itself for the group to sign their own record deal with Stax Records. They achieved moderate success with their 1970 song, The Echo. The group then underwent some major changes when James Knight and Lloyd Parks replaced Alan and Ronald and their new name became Talk of the Town. The changes didn't stick though. James ended up leaving the group and Lloyd decided to join another Philly-based soul act called Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Before his departure, Lloyd managed to help John land a job in the post room at the Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff-headed label, Philadelphia International Records. John and Gene wasted no time showing off the first song they'd written together, called Backstabbers. Eventually, Leon convinced soul trio, the OJs, to record the track. They were initially reluctant to do the song because they wanted to focus on doing love songs and ballads. The track became the first worldwide hit for the label in 1972. Over the next several years, Gene and John carried on releasing singles as Talk of the Town, but they were in far greater demand as in-house songwriters with Philadelphia International. The songwriting and production efforts of the duo were also utilized by numerous other artists, such as Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, Teddy Pendergrass, Gladys Knight, James Brown, and Stevie Wonder. Gene and John formed together as a group officially under the name McFadden and Whitehead in the late 70s. By then, they had Grammy nominations and gold and platinum records galore under their belt, but the duo still felt they could make it in their own right. Along with keyboard player Jerry Cohen, the duo came up with Ain't No Stoppin' Us Now, a track off their self-titled debut album, which appropriately fit their renewed optimism. Ain't no stopping us now. Gene told Blues and Soul magazine in 1980, We felt it was a hit the minute the tracks were completed. Honestly though, we never expected it to be so big. The song applied to everybody and it was also about our own lives. The worldwide hit bridged the gap between soul and disco, went to number one on the R&B charts, became a top 20 hit on the Billboard Hot 100, a top five hit in the UK, and received a Grammy Award nomination for Best R&B Vocal Performance by a Duo, Group, or Chorus. According to a report by popular radio personality Casey Kasem, all of Gene and John's accomplishments could have come to an abrupt end if it wasn't for a fateful decision they made in May 1979. The men were in Chicago promoting their music and doing various interviews, since it was just one month after their big hit dropped. They ultimately agreed to do one more interview at the last minute, and that forced them to have to reschedule their flight to Los Angeles that they would have boarded that day to the following day. That missed flight ended up being American Airlines Flight 191, which crashed shortly after takeoff from O'Hare International Airport, killing all 258 passengers plus the crew. Despite releasing two other albums, 1980's I Heard It In A Love Song and 1982's Moving On, McFadden and Whitehead never managed to duplicate their initial success. During this time, the duo left Philadelphia International for a production deal with Capital EMI America and went on to work with the likes of Melba Moore and Freddie Jackson. Throughout the decade, Gene and John were associated with Philadelphia International. They long complained that they were being ripped off. In the beginning, the work was fun, but as time went on, dissatisfaction over money set in. Gene told Philadelphia Magazine in 1983, we signed the contract, so it's hard to have many regrets. I chalk most of it up to experience, but we had no publishing rights at all at Philly International. They made it a business point that the company got all the publishing rights. That means they take 50% of the royalties off the top before the writers get to split anything. In 1984, McFadden and Whitehead issued an updated take on their 70s hit called Ain't No Stoppin', Ain't No Way, 
but stopped recording shortly thereafter. After serving time in prison in the 80s for tax evasion, John then launched a solo career. He released his debut solo album titled I Need Money Bad in 1988. When the 90s came around, Gene and John reunited, appearing on disco and soul oldies package tours. On May 11, 2004, at the age of 55, John Whitehead was murdered on the street outside of his Philadelphia home studio. While he was working on his vehicle with another man, John was ambushed and shot by multiple gunmen who then fled. Eyewitnesses claim to have heard up to a dozen rounds fired. The other man with John was also struck but survived. Even though rumors abound that the incident may have been a case of mistaken identity, the case remains unsolved to this day. He is survived by his wife, two sons, and two daughters. In October 2022, 18 years after the tragedy, John's family spoke to Fox 29 Philadelphia about the pain over his loss they still deal with today and the frustration over the perpetrators never being caught. The captain of the Philadelphia Police Department said that newer resources are allowing more cold cases, such as this one, to be reopened. He also emphasized that they understand that it's their job to provide families of homicide victims with the closure they need. Two years after John's death on January 27, 2006, Jean McFadden died due to complications from liver and lung cancer. He was 56 years old. Now that McFadden and Whitehead were officially no more, Philadelphia International founders Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff released a statement about the incredible talent the men possessed and the gifts they gave to the music world. Not only could they write sensational singles, but they could write amazing album songs too. As artists and producers, we admired them in the studio. As songwriters, we appreciated them for sharing our commitment to creating lyrics of motivation and strength for people around the globe to enjoy. The duo's final work, a single called Show Me The Money, was released in 2009. In 2017, McFadden and Whitehead were posthumously inducted into the Philadelphia Music Alliance Walk of Fame.